the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are reviewing the mystic cards in Into Deep, the first mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. There are spoilers through it if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on The Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get a Tentacle. And the cards in between are awarded a plus one, zero, or elder thing, respectively. Before I get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. There are three Mystic cards in the pack, and they are all variations on uh, a theme. The first of them being Armageddon. It is a four-cost asset with a combat skill icon. It has the spell and curse traits. It uses three charges. As an action, you can spend one charge, fight. This attack uses willpower instead of combat and deals plus one damage. If a curse token is revealed during this attack, you may deal one damage to an enemy at your location, or place one charge on Armageddon. It uh, requires an arcane slot. Now, I, I sat down and did some math uh, the other night on these, and uh, if you are only revealing one token uh, from the Chaos Bag, and you've got uh, one curse token in the bag, you only have a 4.76% chance of, of this thing uh, triggering. If you've got five curse tokens in the bag, you've got a 20% chance, and at 10 curse tokens, you're up to 33.33%. Uh, so not a, a, a big chance of this thing actually working out for you, uh, unless you're using some sort of a way of uh, drawing multiple uh, 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 tokens from the bag, like Olive McBride. If you use Olive uh, and you've only got one token, it's 14.29%. At five tokens, she's up to 50.43, and at 10 tokens, 71.92. Uh, unfortunately, I I'm, think there is uh, uh, this card costs more than Shriveling or Azure Flame. Uh, unless you can pack the bag with tokens or use Olive to draw multiple tokens, I just don't think you're going to get the value out of this that uh, that you expect. What do you think, Nate? Uh, I mean, on its face, it is basically just a slightly more expensive uh, shriveling, which is fine. It's not the worst. Um, the The curse token isn't like contingent on you dealing two damage, uh, which is which is good. I um, I think with these cards specifically, they're they're hard to judge because you can you can build a whole deck around them. And I think you might see some, uh, you might see some additional benefit from drawing curse tokens during these skill tests. But you have to jump through a lot of hoops to make these cards more uh, more than what they are. And I I think for that, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Yeah, I but, think the one of the big issues right now, anyway, is that mystics just don't have like a pure mystic just doesn't have a lot of ways to add a lot of curse tokens to the bag i mean they've you can play the neutral card tempt fate which will add three uh, you can play um, tides of fate which will turn all the blessed tokens into curse tokens but at that point you're playing four cards just to manipulate the tokens in the bag just to try to get yourself enough curse tokens for this thing to to trigger and Mm -hmm. and between that and uh, so there's four cards now you've got to add all of if you want to make sure uh you draw enough tokens to see those curse tokens there's you're up to six and you haven't actually done anything yet <laughs> mm -hmm. you you've got all this architecture you've got to build up around a more expensive shriveling which is which is a little um as someone who plays a lot of mystic that just isn't that appealing to me and and i guess the other issue i have is that that curse token is going to be a minus two so you either need a way to mitigate that token or you need to have above average willpower in order to account for it which if mm -hmm. you're facing an enemy with a average to above average fight um 
then you're probably going to have to commit extra cards to this to account for the to the skill test just to account for that for that curse token which is again now I'm now not only am I playing a lot of cards to make this thing good but now I'm having to commit cards as well in order to to trigger it and especially like I think the the one who seems to play around the the mystic who seems to play around with the most tokens is is Father Mateo but he's only got a four willpower so if you subtract two for the curse token now he's at a two and that's not a position i want to be in when i'm facing mm. facing enemies yeah yeah there is like like i was saying there is definitely a lot of hoops you have to jump through but you know on the on the other side you know it is it is still a way to deal two damage so in a in a pinch it is still useful in that regard um Unlike other cards that we've seen that interact with uh, with the tokens just on their own face. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean it is nice to have the option to deal an additional damage so you can hit for three with this thing, which is I mean three enemies with three health seem to be more the norm than the exception uh, these days, uh, and the ability to ping an enemy that you're not engaged with. Uh, is also is also potentially valuable if you've got a whooper wills hanging around or or something like that uh, that you just want to get rid of and of course adding a charge is never a I'm not going to say no to that either uh, it's just how do you get enough tokens in the bag and how do you draw them consistently enough to to trigger this thing is the mm -hmm. uh, is the big question mark for me and I'm I'm just not seeing that that stuff in mystic right now maybe in a in a mystic slash seeker uh, seekers have seem to have the the lion's share of the uh of the curse tokens right now so mm -hmm. or or maybe a, a mystic rogue like dexter or uh safina who can add a bunch of curse tokens with things like faustian bargain and some of the other rogue cards that we've seen yeah yeah so i think there's i I think by the end of the the cycle there might we might see the deck that this goes in but right now I'm not seeing it so I think I'm just going to give this a zero yeah I'm right there with you um, I didn't want to give it an elder thing as like I was saying I do think that at least on its face the card is still useful um, if you're playing a catchy you do get an additional charge so you know there is that um it's still below average on shriveling in that regard but it doesn't have a downside like shriveling so uh you know you can kind of weigh that out how you how you see it um and if you're leaning into the into the curse mechanic then this card is pretty decent yeah so i think uh this is one that we'll have to watch. I'm I'm sure uh, by the end of the cycle we'll we'll get a better impression of what uh, what this uh, Mystic Curse deck looks like. Uh, but uh, but right now I'm just not sure there's enough there to to get it off the ground. But uh, we still have uh, five packs to go, so uh, I think it's a bit early to uh, to write this one off. The second uh, Mystic card in the pack is uh, quite similar. Uh, it is Eye of Chaos. It is a five cost asset with a intellect skill icon, the spell and curse traits. It uses three charges. And as an action, you may spend one charge, investigate, investigate using willpower instead of intellect. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at this location. If a curse token is revealed during this investigation, you may discover one clue at a connecting location or place one charge on Eye of Chaos. It uh, comes with a, and it requires a, an, an arcane slot. So again, uh, your odds of, uh, of drawing uh, a, a curse tokens uh, just uh, without a little bit of help aren't that great, but as soon as you add in cards that let you draw multiple tokens, like all of this thing gets uh, much more much more reliable uh and again it's uh i mean i'm not going to turn my turn my nose up at discovering an additional clue and potentially discovering uh an additional three clues um 
uh, two at your location and then one nearby. Uh, but again, uh, I'm not too sure I see how we get enough tokens in the bag to, to make this thing work. And it is more expensive than, than either right of seeking or clairvoyance. Yeah, I was going to say, I think what really kills this card is the fact that it costs five resources. It's it's just so much to ask for. Yeah, um, especially in a Mystic, if you're not playing somebody like David Renfield to to get enough of those, um, to get enough resources to pay five. Like, man, that's that's a huge hit, especially at the beginning of the at the beginning of a scenario. And if you're playing David to get the resources, you're not playing all of to actually trigger uh, to draw the tokens. So I think if you're playing this card, you're probably playing something like um, what's the ritual card called? Uh, da, 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 da. You know what I'm talking about? The one that reduces the spells by three. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, uncage you could play the that soul. Or you, uncage the soul. Yeah. You could play Uncage the Soul or you could play Voice of Raw from the Jacqueline Fine starter deck. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, um, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to ask for. It takes your whole starting resource pool and it leaves you vulnerable to enemies if you don't have any resources to play another asset or an event. If, you, uh, if you're if you reliant on your willpower to deal with enemies. Um, uh, at least it doesn't have a downside with, um, with discovering additional clues like Rite of Seeking does, which can end your turn. Um, yeah. So how yeah. would you play this? Uh, I mean, the thing is that the sixth sense exists as well, which is, which is a very nice, uh, which is a very it's nice way of discovering clues, and I think it's mm. considerably cheaper than this one is too. So, um, I love the art on this. The art is very cool. Mm. Uh, I but I think if I, as someone who plays mystics, if I drew this in my opening hand. Um, I'm not I sure. Hope I, I have uncaged the soul. In my yeah, head. unless you've got uncaged the soul, I just don't see how you can how you can afford to play this because even if you do, you're you're basically um, putting yourself in a very difficult position for the the next couple turns um, if you have to pay full price for this. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you uh, rate it? Do you think it's it's worth a zero like Armageddon, or does the 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 cost of this knock it down a peg? Um, I mean, it, it knocks it down a peg, but I don't know if it knocks it down to an elder thing. Um, my reasoning is that if you're playing the deck that plays Armageddon, I think you're definitely also playing Eye of Chaos, and you're probably also playing Voice of Raw and Uncage the Soul in that deck. And I think when you have that whole deck uh, assembled, that the five resources won't feel as cumbersome yeah i'd uh i think uh, i'll give this one a, a zero as well i it looks it doesn't look like a very good deal on the face of it and and i know if i drew this card without an uncage the soul in my hand i would be very reluctant to play it um but i am going to be optimistic about the the mystic curse deck that uh that we're seeing that I think we're seeing the beginnings of we haven't seen the full uh, the full version yet yeah we haven't seen how mystics add curse tokens to the bag which is I, the most critical piece to how these cards are going to to pan out um, but you can discover three clues with this card so that is true there is that and one of them is at a connecting location so um Probably so easier to trigger that in multiplayer than solo, but uh, definitely, yeah. But if yep. you're gathering that many clues anyway, it's I mean it's definitely multiplayer. I'm just a little worried that if Tides of Fate is the only, <laughs> like if it's t if it's Tempt Fate and Tides of Fate that we're relying on to get enough curse tokens in the bag, uh, I don't think that's uh, quite enough to. Uh, I mean they've also got the that awesome skill from. Um, Innsmouth Conspiracy, Promise uh, of Power, Promise yep. of Power, but that only adds one token. So it's mm -hmm. it's you really need to be adding more than that to to uh, to pull this off. So we'll see. This is this is a, another one to watch. 
one other thing to um, before we move on to the next card too uh i'll kind of on the subject about adding the tokens not only do you need a way to get them in the bag but you need a way to keep putting them in the bag because ideally you want to be drawing them when you're using this when you're using these spells so you're going to be taking them out which again lowers the chances that you're going to be continuing to draw them so mm -hmm. um now maybe if you're playing this in a in a seeker off class mystic or something like that with the blasphemous covenant uh, that's one way you can keep those tokens in the bag for future use mm -hmm. so but uh as we shall see, the the Mystic Covenant does not uh, does not do that. So, the final Mystic card in the pack is Shroud of Shadows. It is a three cost asset with an agility sky, skill icon, spell and curse trait. Uses three charges, uh, and it has uh, action. Spend one charge, evade. This evasion attempt uses willpower instead of agility. If you succeed and the evaded enemy is non-elite, you may move that enemy to a connecting location. If a curse token is revealed during this evasion attempt, you may move to a connecting location or place one charge on Shroud of Shadows. It takes up an arcane slot. Uh, this is the uh, the Mists of Rillier, um, uh, similar to Mists of Rillier. Again, more expensive than Mists. Uh, and uh, all of the stuff we talked about with uh, drawing tokens uh, and the need to draw multiple tokens uh, applies here. Uh, but, uh, I mean, extra movement, uh, being able to dump a non-elite enemy in a connecting location and then move yourself if you draw a curse token is pretty pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, Mist does basically the same thing. Um but but you have to reveal a special symbol and discard a card from your hand if that's the case but i don't like i think this one is the dud of them all um i think what saves miss is just because it's so cheap and it comes with four charges but i think shroud of shadows uh the fact that it has this non-elite uh clause on it i think kind of makes it lose a lot of stock in my opinion and then the the ability that you get from from the curse token, I think, is really conditional on the scenario that you're playing. Like, you need to have a really large map. And if you're playing something like the Forgotten Age, uh, a lot of those maps are pretty cramped, so you don't have a lot of space to move around. So I, I think Shroud of Shadows is uh, kind of the lame duck of the three. Yeah, I can I can see where you're coming from. I mean, evasion is always sort of the is the the third leg of the stool, and it's the weakest leg. I think uh, it's compared to either killing enemies or discovering clues. Evasion always sort of plays third fiddle to those those uh, those abilities, and and uh, yeah, the non elite. Uh, I'm not too sure how often that's going to, to come into play. I mean, it's, um, I guess if you're tanking a boss or something like that at the end of a scenario, uh, this prevents you from moving it. But I'm not too sure you'd want to move the boss anyway, because it would probably have Hunter or you've got, mm -hmm. you're just tanking it because you want uh, you just want to keep it from retaliating against the guardian in the group or something like that. So mm. I don't see the non-elite being particularly bad. I do kind of like how you can you can basically get um, some separation between you and the enemy. Um, a lot of the enemies in the Innsmouth Conspiracy have the hunter keyword, a lot of those deep ones, and they all have most of them anyway that i've seen have on engage effects so being mm -hmm. able to put your put some distance between you and them uh so you don't have to to worry about them is is nice so i could see it being being valuable i mean that's the biggest problem with evading enemies with the hunter keyword is that uh, you get rid of them for a turn but then they are going to give chase and um then you're sort of in that awkward position where you've moved on, but then you you either are going to take an attack attack when they catch up with you, or you have to go backwards to try to deal with them. And I think this 
this sort of mitigates that issue a little bit because you can push that enemy away from you and then move if you get the curse token. Yeah, it is also nice if you're in the um you know, if you're in the situation where you need to investigate your location and you need to shove an enemy away from you so that you can investigate freely, there is uh there is that additional niche benefit as well. But uh what would you rate this card, man from Lang? Um I'm not sure it's I I I think I'm going to stay with my zero from the the previous cards. I I want to see what this deck looks like before um before I I start writing off these mystic cards. I think I mean it's got Dexter Drake on the front. Uh so uh, I assume that Dexter can get some value out of this uh, FFG often uh, hints at players strongly that uh, what they should be, uh, who they should be playing these cards with. So uh, Dexter uh, may be able to get some use out of this. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's definitely the weakest of the three, and probably the one that uh, will, if you had to cut one, uh, this is the one that you would cut. I think you're either going to play, th- um, if you're playing this deck and assuming it works, you're. I think Eye of Chaos is the one you're keeping, and then depending on what kind of mystic you're playing, you're either going to play Armageddon or Shroud of Shadows, but probably not both. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. You only have so many arcane slots, so you know you're, it's kind of Sophie's choice on which one you pick. But um, you know, I think I think you're right. I think I would give this a zero to, um, like you said, I. The non-elite clause is a little bit of uh, of an annoyance, but I don't think it comes up too often. Um, other than the instances where you want to evade and move versus shoving, um, shoving an enemy from to a location. Um, yeah, I mean, it also just gets additional charges like all the other ones. So you know, if if the deck pans out, then you're you're not going to be sad having this in your deck. That is going to do it for the Mystic cards in Into Deep. Uh, The uh, three cards in this pack, basically, uh, I mean, we've seen variations on these sorts of cards uh, since the beginning of the game, and uh, we recently received uh, three more variants in uh, the Jacqueline Fine uh, starter deck. Um, What do you think uh, in total here, uh, here, Nate? Um... You know, I think these more than the other ones are so much more difficult to evaluate without seeing how mystics actually get those curse tokens into the bag. If if they can get uh, curse tokens into the bag reliably and it's on cards that they would want to be playing anyway, then these cards are going to feel great. But I think uh, if mystics don't, then these cards are just going to be more expensive alternatives. Yeah, I'd I'd agree with you. I think if you're maybe a Mystic Off-Class Seeker or Mystic Off-Class Rogue is the way to go with these, in which case, I mean, you're looking at somebody like, um, I mean, Luke. Uh, You've got uh, Marie can include some of the the Seeker cards. You've got Dexter who can go Rogue. You've got Safina. Uh, Investigators like that, I think, are in a much better position. Uh, than say your pure mystic like uh, like an Akachi, while she does get an additional charge, I just don't think she can add enough tokens to the bag to make it worth her while. Yeah, yeah, I think Akachi is definitely a different archetype than than the token reveal. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, like even somebody like Agnes uh, would also be in a different wouldn't be wouldn't appeal to these cards because she's she's an off-class survivor and survivors are more um not necessarily add they're more adding bless tokens or mitigating curse tokens so mm-hmm. that there's not that much synergy there but i mean that's the thing is that um you really want a high willpower uh, investigator who's able to use these because you are sort of tagging yourself with a minus two token and, what do you uh, think about um sorry not to interrupt what do you think about jim because uh, he can take both faustian bargain and deep knowledge yeah he could uh jim could certainly um pack the bag with tokens and he does have 
if you play Jim with Deep Knowledge and Faustian Bargain and Olive, I mean, he'd have you'd have everything you need. I, I'd be just worried about Jim only has four willpower, which is... Um, yeah, but um, he does turn the skulls into zeros, you know, so you could, you could in theory, um, you know, draw a curse and then try to, like, use Olive or something like that to draw skulls, so... I think I think uh, I think it complements Jim well, at least. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. And if you throw in throw in Tempt Fate as well, you you get even more curse tokens. So somebody like Jim could could maybe make this work, and uh, we will uh, have to leave that to the community. To uh, I'm sure they are already brainstorming builds that uh, that will uh, include these cards. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I am also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.